guys. Oh my goodness, you are in the Lord's house. Amen. Right. Amen. Should be like heat. Turn up the heat. Oh, you know, are you kidding? Yes. Although when Betty says we need to turn up the heat, ninety-nine percent of the time she's just freezing. She needs the actual heat turned up. We do. We need to turn up the heat, don't we? We need to be excited about coming to church. You know what, you guys? I'm guessing that most of y'all are either working yourselves so much that by the time Sunday morning comes around, you don't have anything left. Or you just stayed up too late last night. <laughs> Andrew's like, yeah, I guess I did. We need to set our priorities, don't we? We've been talking about the Old Testament laws and all everything that's been that was that they had to do, 613 of these laws that they had to follow. And then after that was completed by Jesus raising from the dead, we are we are don't have those laws anymore, but we still have to set priorities and get things right in our life. And you know, if church isn't number one in your life, your priorities are off. Spencer, you're fixing to uh, go. Are you going to college? No. Nope. You no, know, you're going to stay at home? Yep. Yep. And what are you going to do? Restore cars and go into the trucking industry. Okay, restore cars and go into the trucking industry. But Spencer, I'm going to tell you this right now. If you don't put God number one in your life, you will not succeed. That's just the way things go. And by what I mean is succeed, when you get before God in heaven, He's going to say, what did you do? We might be successful here on earth, right? We might have lots of stuff. And we might have a great job. We might have loads of friends and all kinds of customers. But that is not success. Success is what crowns we have to lay at the feet of Jesus when we get to heaven. That's success. And we often mark our success by what we have here on earth. Know what toys are in the garage? How good we can do stuff. That's not going to cut it, though, when we get before the Almighty in heaven. Because He doesn't care anything about that. He really doesn't. Sometimes, I get a big head, you guys know that. Because I can do so
come and ask me. I was, uh, I was the maintenance guy at the school, and he said, hey, do you know how to put in hot water heaters? I had never once put in a hot water heater in my entire life. I said, well, is it gas or electric? He says, it's gas. I'm like, oh, geez, I'm going to blow myself to kingdom come. My career is going to be over before I even get started. Sure, I know how to do that. You ever put one in before? Yeah. yeah. Sure, I know how to do that. Avoidance is the best way. Don't ever tell a lie because you're going to get caught if you're in a lie. <laughs> so I went up to the house and I looked at how it was how it was installed. And what did I do? I tore it up and I put the new one in exactly the way it was installed. Lit it up. Done. I can do it all. Absolutely. I mean, there's not much that I can't do. I can, I can do level work. I can do wood burning. I can paint. Not only paint houses, but I can paint pictures. But you didn't know I was an artist. Can you paint on canvas, though? Yes, I can paint on canvas, and I have done plenty. I'm huh? a pretty good teacher, too. Can you paint a huh? car? I, I have painted cars. I painted my motorcycle. I'm, I'm not the best at it, but yes, I can do it. And yes, I'm a pretty good teacher, too. But you know what? None of that matters when I get to heaven. When I stand before God and He's going to say, What did you do for me? I'm going to list all these things that I can do. He's like, No, 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 no. What did you do for me? So, yeah, I gave you all these gifts and all these talents and all these abilities, but did you do them for my kingdom? Were you kingdom minded? Did you have me in mind when you went to work? Because of my personality, because God called me early, yes, I can say yes for me. Most of the time, I have God in mind. The things that I do are to advance the kingdom. But that's me. I'm, I'm abnormal. A lot, a lot of people don't. When they go about, when you all go about your daily, daily business, when you're at the factory, when you're, when you're at the store working, when you're at the school doing your job, um, whatever it is you do, are you, are you doing that for the Lord Jesus Christ? Are you doing that for God? Are you kingdom minded? Or are you just trying to get through the day looking for Friday? And when Friday comes, are you like, oh, it's 5 o'clock somewhere? I like that sometimes. Sometimes I'm like, oh, I don't care if it's 5 o'clock. You know what I mean? It's, it's, time, it's time just to chill. We're looking at Titus. We've been, in, we've been in Titus for this series, for our reset series. And last week we looked at denying ungodliness. This week we're going to look at worldly lusts. That's simply wanting the things of the world. And that's perfectly natural. Wanting the things of the world is, that's us. That's, that's how we are. We see other people that have stuff and we want stuff. And there's nothing wrong with having stuff. But what's your motivation for wanting it? And then when you get it, do you use it for the kingdom of God? Because you see, if you don't use it for the kingdom of God, you... You're, you're in trouble once you get before him. Because God's going to say, I gave you that. Spencer's got a dump truck. God's going to say, Spencer, I gave you that dump truck. Did you use it for me? I will. You will. Good. I'm, I'm glad. We need to do it all the time, too. Not just occasionally. It's not, it's, it's not a one and done thing. It's not a rental thing. It's not okay. God, you gave me this snowmobile, and uh, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna organize a snowmobile trip with the people at the church, and we're gonna go out and we're gonna and we're gonna have a little Bible study and a one and done thing. No. See, if God gives you a snowmobile, He wants you to go and use that as a tool to witness for Him to do good. If you see somebody broken down on the trail and you ride right by Him, you have just missed an opportunity to do God's work. And maybe He gave you that soul before that occasion. And so you stop and you help the person out. And the person is, is so overwhelmed by your generosity that they seek out God themselves. Ah, now we see how things work a little bit, don't we? Could be a computer and printer. Jamie has to use a computer and a printer. Lots of people have come into the cafe. I need to do a resume and I need to print it out. Well, you know what? God has given us 
computers, and printers. And if I just say, oh no, I've got too much personal stuff on my, on my computer, you can't use that. I'm going to be in trouble when I get to heaven. Because God's going to say, I gave you that computer. What would you use it for? Oh, well, I played lots of games on it. Candy Crush is my favorite. <laughs> oh, see. Put a saying on it. 
Do something with it. Do a morning YouTube channel and have your coffee there and, and have the scripture on the coffee. And you can talk about anything you want. At the end, pull it up and read the scripture. Kingdom-minded, doing things to spread the gospel, doing things that that uh, that uh, promotes awareness that God is real and alive. And you can do that with anything you have. Be careful at your work, but when you're at work, have an attitude that you're working unto God. And if you have the idea that everything you're doing is for Him, people will come up and talk to you and ask questions. You want to be that infectious type of person where, where others want to be around you. They want to talk to you. They want to visit with you. They want to find out, hey, what's, what's different about you? people of the Old Testament that uh, had to follow these rules, they, they sought out the things of the world too. They sought out the things of the world in the form of other gods. Baal and Hazrak and all, all kinds of other gods. Gods of water, gods of fertility, gods of the harvest, gods of the air, all kinds of gods that would supposedly promise prosperity and growth and all, all the things that the world can offer. You know what? God, Yahweh, the God of Israel, the God of all, the creator of the universe, He offers all that too. But He offers it so that we can use it for furthering his kingdom. Because he offers eternal life. And that is the best thing that anybody could have. So, you know what, Spencer, as you move forward, know that God expects you to use the things that he's given you, your talents, your gifts, your items, your, the tools that you have. He expects you to use them for his kingdom and his good. Don't ever lose sight of that. Because once you get to be my age or older. And you've squandered some opportunities in life. You're going to wish you had that opportunity back. Because as you get older time goes faster. And faster and faster. Hi pooch. And faster and faster. And opportunities fly by because you have less energy less desire, you haven't trained yourself into, into standing up for God and doing the things of God. So you see all of these opportunities go by the wayside. And then, at one point, you're going to look back like, man, I wish I had that opportunity back. I wish I had that opportunity back. I wish I didn't lust after the things of the world. I wish I didn't want all this stuff. And I wish I would have focused on God and His heavenly realm. Remember that. Um, because <laughs> when you get to be older, it's too late. It's never too late to change. It's never too late, too late to turn around. But it's too late to get those opportunities back. And after the opportunity passes, we still have to answer to God for it. And there's nothing we can do but kneel before the Almighty and say, I am sorry. So, I think we need to be excited about the things of God. Amen? Amen. I really think that we need to <coughs> just... Forget about everything that goes on around us in the world and, and all the things that we want and need and turn to God. And if we turn to God, He will give us the things that we need. He will give us the desires of our hearts. That's how it's supposed to work. It's not supposed to be backwards. 
But too often it's backwards. We search out the things of the world to try to make us happy. Instead of searching out God to, for having Him to give us the things of the world which makes us happy. It's backwards. We've got to be right. We've got to get things switched around in our lives. Focus on God putting Him first. Let's pray. God, we thank you so much, Lord. We thank you for your scripture. We thank you for who you are. We thank you for your blessings on us. Lord, I thank you so much for, for Spencer. And I pray that you will put your hands on him and that you would uh, bless him in all that he does in the future. Lord, and each one of us, we all have the opportunity to serve you. And I pray that you would excite our hearts, that you would fill us with the Holy Spirit, that, that uh, we can just... Turn everything towards you. All that we do, all that we say, how we act, that we can turn it towards you, Lord. We can be kingdom-minded. And that those that we know around us that don't know you will seek your face. Father, thank you for your blessings on us. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you so much for who you are. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
on you today, this your Lord's day. Help us to rest and do your will this week. In Jesus' name, go in peace.